On to announcements. The City of Katadi has special open office hours on Monday evenings from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the Community Development Department at City Hall as part of its Katadi Open for Business program. This program provides personalized assistance and information to developers, current Katadi business owners, and those interested in starting a new business within the city. The Rohnert Park Katadi Regional Library hosts events for all ages, including art exhibits, book clubs, and children's programs. All events are free and open to the public. For more information, call the library at 584-9121 or visit sonomalibrary.org. The Katadi Historical Society Museum is open regularly the second Tuesday of each month from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., Saturdays from 1 to 4 p.m., and also by appointment. For more information, call 794-0304. Citizens interested in receiving City of Katadi community alerts via text or email are encouraged to sign up at nixle.com, which is N-I-X-L-E dot com. Now I'll move on to approval of the final agenda. Are there any changes? No changes. Thank you very much. Now I'll move on to citizens' business. Um, I don't have any comment cards, but is there anybody from the public wishing... Oh. I spoke too soon. Just a moment. Thank you. Okay, I have a speaker card from Hillary Smith of Katadi. Good evening. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Hillary Smith. I'm here in my capacity as your library commissioner from Katadi. Um, as you know, the library's undergone a lot of changes in the past year. Uh, a new JPA, a new director, a new library commission, and we're now embarking on a strategic planning process to help our, us focus our resources going forward. As part of that process, the library is hosting a series of community forums that begin this week, um, forums for staff input, forums for lab uh, friends and foundation members, and public forums. Uh, the first of these is uh, this Thursday, February 26th, in the Healdsburg Library from 5.30 to 7. The next is Thursday, March 5th, at the, cent at the Rincon Valley branch in Santa Rosa, also from 5.30 to 7. Uh, there's another meeting Thursday, March 12th, from 5.30 to 7, at the Sebastopol Library, and a meeting Friday, March 27th, at the Petaluma Library from 5.30 to 7.00. Um, none are unfortunately in our Katadi Rohnert Park Library branch, uh, but they are spread throughout the county to try and make it more accessible to uh, citizens. And for people who can't attend these meetings, there'll also be surveys in the branches and online. So I would encourage uh, you all to participate and to encourage people you know to take part in this planning process so that we have a library that's designed for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody else who'd like to make public comment during citizens business? All right, seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. And then I'll ask if there are any direction on future agenda items. Starting on the right, no, nothing this week? Mm -hmm. Not this week, Okay, very good. Then we'll move on to the fun part of our evening, which is our honorary mayor, Colton Davis of Rancho Katati High School. So Colton, if we could have you come forward. Hi. Um, so I was talking to the members at my school, students, and um, for suggestions on how the city can get involved with um, the high school. And um, just some of the ones that we're thinking about is um, community service hours. Um, to graduate from Ranch Katata, you have to have 40 community service hours. And uh, I was wondering if there is any way that the city can help get involved with um, through any sort of program for uh, students to graduate with their 40 hours, if, if there's any way that the city can get involved and help out with that. Because like, I know myself, um, I get hours through band, but it's not it's not near 40 yet, and I'm only a sophomore, but you know, it, it'd be, it'd help a lot, and I don't think I'm the only student there, so it'd be, it'd be nice if there was some sort of way you could work together for that, and like, to be set up for that. And um, another um, idea was some sort of like a driver awareness or safety program for um, students at my school because there's, me and clean myself, I just got my license and there's quite a few others who are 
in the process of getting their licenses and I think it would be a good idea for um, the police department or the city to get involved and make some sort of a assembly or program or something to meet um, with the school and the students just to make sure everyone's on the same page and everyone's doing the right thing. So those are the, those are the two main points for the most part. Great. Thank you. Um, so does anybody want to comment and chat with them? Sure. Yes. Council I'll go ahead and kick it off. Um, two really good points, Colton. Thanks for bringing those up. And um, I know we have offered, and, and there's usually a number of volunteer efforts citywide for uh, earning community service hours. So um, what it might behoove us to do is I know that there's a committee that Council Member Harvey and I are on, which is the two by two by two. So we have two council members from Katadi, two from Rohnert Park, and two members from the school district. And we haven't had one of those meetings in a while, but it would be a good thing to kind of pool both cities together and say, you know, here are the opportunities and get that to the, uh, get it to the ranch and even get it to Tech High and whoever needs to see, you know, here are the opportunities you guys can look into and maybe we could update our website from there. So uh, that's something I can follow up on, but that was a really good point. Thanks for bringing that up. I don't know if I asked you this last time, but did I mention or ask anything about project graduation? You did, I think. I did. I can't remember what you said, though, because it was two weeks ago and I'm like, I'm really old. I don't remember these things. So were you aware or are you aware of Project Grad? I, I wasn't aware. I am now, of course. But um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to look into that. Uh, it seems to be a very good program for that. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing, again, for the graduating seniors. And it's really good for, you know, sophomores and or juniors, even freshmen, to kind of get involved. That way you kind of have an idea of what it's like. And there's a talk about volunteer hours. Um, some of us, when we were on that board, were really gracious with putting down the number of hours for the work you did. I'm just saying, okay. in case it's an opportunity. <laughs> so something to look into. But thanks for your report. I appreciate it. Yep. That's my Barbie. Yeah, those are great I ideas. Uh, one of the things that, that I thought um, is possibly we use interns and maybe there's an opportunity maybe um, for some of the students from the high school um, to do that. And yes, John, you brought up the two by two by two, um, and we are going to get that going again. I'll talk about that later in council reports, but that is a good um, place for that to be brought up. So thank you for that. Thank you. Council Member Mammon. Thank you, Mayor Skidlin. Well, welcome back, Colton. Good to see you again. Um, I'm going to agree with uh, my colleague. Uh, two by two by two sounds like a good place to look into this. I, I was kind of jotting down, trying to think not only what things can we offer, but what is the realm of actions that you can take to earn credits? Because I begin to think hmm, w w there are probably a lot of things that might be right under escaping our notice that might be viable to do this with. Uh, the first thing that came to mind is we used to have a lot of credits, both for you and particularly also for the college. Uh, over with creek critters, uh, and that was a very good thing, and that worked because although supervision was required and there were concerns naturally, we were able to drive pretty large numbers of people sometimes, and with that number of people, it served two things. It made it was worth the investment for the creek critter staff to put that on, but then you guys got a lot of hours and a lot of good work got done. So, so I'd suggest I'd wait to see maybe what comes back from the 2 by 2 by 2 committee. I love that name. And, and then perhaps just, just not an official request, but just a suggestion of sending upstream. I don't know if there's any possibilities for organizing something with public works. I wouldn't want them to put a lot of time into it. But if you were able to say, hey, I can drive 30 people uh, for, for an afternoon or a morning or a day, uh, if we can get a certain amount of credits, there's, I, there must be always weeding uh, and other lovely chores. I'm thinking of the type of things we used to do at Creek Critters. Um, so just, just a thought. And if anything comes back down, maybe we can contact Mr. Davis with that and see if we can help you. Thank you. So thank you for being here tonight. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank you. Council or sorry, Vice Mayor Moore. <laughs> uh, well, Colton, it's nice to see you. I was um, out of town at the last council meeting, so I didn't get a chance to meet you there. Thank you for participating in the Honorary Mayor Program. Um, one of the goals that I am looking forward to, and I think some of the council members are looking to support down the road, is to eventually try to reopen up a teen center here once we kind of get a little bit more established fiscally from the most recent economic downturn. Um, and with that in mind, it would be wonderful to have team participation in bringing that up and volunteering um, 
because I think when we first did that before, that was a lot of what brought that to fruition. Um, and, you know, kids coming in and cleaning and painting and things like that um, really gives them a sense of ownership. And uh, I would highly encourage you to continue to, to view our website and keep updated on progress and, and maybe check out some of the agenda items as they're coming up down the road as we get a little bit more stable. Um, and I think it would be a great opportunity to get involved and also to get the word out that um, we're hoping to get something like that going. So Sounds, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you. And the only other thing I had thought of is um, with the driver safety awareness, um, I participated a few years ago in this uh, program called Every 10 Minutes. Um, and I don't know if they always do it at the Santa Rosa High School or if they rotate it around. But do they? They have. I know they've done it at they've done it at the rancho. Okay, okay, because that's just um, it's a really interesting because you do it's a whole staged uh, car accident. Oh yeah, we had that. You've done that before. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's I think they change it now to every I think it's every four years they do it because because you know it's it's not you know a cheap thing. I understand right. That, but you know I mean it's just maybe like it's something where like um, either a police officer or someone can like come in and inform students you know because I mean the freshman because I was a freshman last year when it happened and you know we not a lot of a lot of the freshmen, at least, uh, we didn't. I was one of the few that got my permit. Not all, not all of them do uh, until they're at least a senior, usually now or even junior. And um, so it's always good to have, you know. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'm also going to ask Officer Kalpa about it because I know he goes to the Miller Driving School and does presentations there where they do um, training just so he can kind of keep people in the loop about the dangers that are possible. So that's a great idea, and I will let him know about that. Um, well, if we're all done, I will I go ahead. I have one more comment, if I oh, may. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Madam Mayor. Um, one thing that I might, you might go back and tell your fellow students, especially the new drivers, um, we heard a lot of concerns regarding speed around the city over the last couple of years. And so we are enacting more compliance regarding speeding concerns. And um, so tickets are on the increase. And they've also done some concerted efforts over at the high school with multiple agencies. So you might let your friends know to um, be cautious because they're out there now more so than previously. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Councilman Harvey. Um, one other opportunity that you may have is um, every year we have the annual Kids Day Parade um, in town. And during the parade, there's then a festival afterwards, and we're always looking um, for volunteers to help with that. You know, there's games um, and things like that that need to be organized. So that's another possibility um, for you. You can check in um, with City Hall because they're always looking for volunteers to help staff that. Thank you. Okay, so I will come down and present you with your honorary mayor um, certificate as well as a pin from the city of Katati, and then I understand there's some interest to have the photo, so let's all come down and give that opportunity to Colton. Thank you very much. All right, um, and though we've moved past Citizens Business, I do have a speaker card um, from a Larry Hoberg, so I'm going to reopen Citizens Business and see if Mr. Hoberg would like to come forward. Uh, 
How's it going, guys? Good evening. Okay. My name is Larry Holberg. I work with Luxury Taxi. Uh, I saw you guys up here about two weeks ago, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, just following up with uh, the Lyft and the Uber kind of situation, uh, going forward to kind of see what's there. I, I never heard back. Uh, I think uh, Damien was going to call me back uh, in regards to a few things, as maybe bringing in reduced permit fees uh, for new drivers coming in. But I just wanted to bring you like a sample of how they market their cars. You won't see the, the you won't see the mustache. It's not like it used to be where they had a big three foot one across the bumpers. Uh, just see, trying to get a you know just an even playing field. Uh, you know there's 12 to 14 lift cars out there now, which in reality is almost what uh, four grand for you guys for your budget and fees. Uh, they aren't being collected. If I have they don't they don't fingerprint. They don't drug test. Uh, I have drivers that are uh, approved in Petaluma that go through the same background check that we do here in Katati. If one of them was to pick up here, they would get a $500 ticket fine for picking up out of, out of the district or out of their jurisdiction. They don't. There is no, their background check is a, is a photo ID and it's just a basic DMV. They run through Megan's Law, but it's based on name and a social. We all know how easy those are to acquire. And, you know, without a fingerprint, those don't change. So you can be somebody else and, you know, they, uh, what was I going to say? So their minimum requirements for, for driving, one year and 21 years of age. They're not local. If you don't believe me, take a ride with them. Ask them where they're from. You're going to get Vallejo, Vacaville, San Francisco, nowhere near here. You know, we're local businesses. We're here. You know, we pay our taxes and that's money out of our pocket that's going to them. They, their vehicle inspections aren't, aren't required. They just changed them up. Originally, their vehicle inspections, to make the car, sure the cars were safe, were done by not a mechanic, but a trainer that was training them how to drive for lift. They had just changed that, I think, I want to say in December. And from what I'm seeing, there was nothing that made them go through and recertify the cars that were done by the peers or by their mentors. You know, going forward, it would be nice to have, you know, something that allows us an even playing field. Make them get permitted. You know, do something that it makes it, because they can operate at a lower cost than us, because they don't. You know, we pay our hundreds, $170 per driver for everything else for the right to operate in the town of Katati. And going forward, it makes it difficult because you're start, you're going to lose taxi drivers, you're going to lose a lot of business from them, which isn't, isn't fair. You know, we're here, we have children, we have wives, we have mortgage payments, we have property tax payments. You guys know we like the property tax payments, right? And those aren't going to be made. You know, they're going to have to go other jobs. They're going to do other things. And the fact is they can operate anywhere in California. So all they would need to do was find my phone. And I have a Lyft app on it. They can operate as me because when you get in the car at nighttime, you can't tell who it is. Okay. I want to thank you guys very much for your time. Please let me know of any way that I can what you guys would need from me. If I should emails, anything, this is all new. But I want to thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, I wanted to ask our acting city manager that this, this is a future agenda item, isn't it, that we've been researching so we can discuss it? It's on the future calendar. Yes, but we have to research it before we can bring it forward. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. So can we let um, Mr. Holberg know when it's going to be on there so he kind of Certainly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to consent calendar. Um, we have one item, um, the amendment to Acting City Manager Employment Agreement. Um, do I have, does anybody want to discuss this I issue or? I'd like to move to approve. Second. Do I need to open it up for public comment? Would anybody like to comment on the consent calendar item? Seeing none, I will close public comment. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? If we could show that's a 5-0 vote in favor. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Our first item is setting the amount of fines for violations of Katati Municipal Code Chapter 9.38, alcohol offenses slash loud parties. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. The council has already approved the alcohol offenses loud parties ordinance. During the hearings, the chief, Chief Parrish, informed council that fines would be set by council by resolution, which is what is being presented tonight. 
Chief Parrish recommends the fines of $100 for posting the residence for 120 days. No loud parties are um, to happen during that time to cover the administrative costs incurred by the city. Chief Parrish fur further recommends that a $500 fine if they violate the posting during this 120 day period. And this is consistent with other jurisdictions in our region. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any comments from council members? Council Member Lehman? Just a quick question in terms of the, I get the idea of the two levels on an initial level and then a, a subsequent level that's higher is perhaps more of an intention getter, certainly. Uh, I was just curious how we came across those as comparables. Are there industry standards, anything local? Um, not, not that I see anything terribly wrong. I'm just curious what the background is on it. We, we took a look at uh, other jurisdictions uh, within the county and ours. We wanted it to um, be, well, easy for the college um, kids to understand that what happens in Roner Park will also happen in Katadi and to make it consistent. So the, uh, the fines are consistent with Roner Park um, and so that's, that's uh, hopefully that answers your question. I think it does. So we looked at local comparables. We're going for consistency with Roner Park because that does make sense. Since that is, if not all of this, it's a significant part of this issue. So thank you for that. No? Uh, no comments. No. Okay. Um, so I'll open this up to public comment. Um, would anybody like to comment on item three? Peace. Hello again. I'm a resident of Roner Park, a homeowner. I live next to a frat house. I've gotten 120 day notice. All right. I've got it at 10 o'clock at night for a birthday party for my wife because they thought we were the frat next door. It was yeah, it's kind of kind of absurd. If there's, is there a way to protest it? Because I know Runner Park doesn't have one. I know there is no, I know if you were, it was to be a nuisance call or a loud and obnoxious, they have to release the names of the people that called. I think, is it disturbing the peace is the correct term? That they have to release the names of the people who call. Uh, I know that with neighbors when they get in feuds, they like to call and complain over every little thing. Does this only pertain to alcohol and parties? If it's a sober party with loud music, is it going to pertain to them? If it's a domestic disturbance, if you're back for multiple times, will it also qualify for them? Or this is only based for the college kids. As a co former college kid, you have to have fun sometime. You have to be able to get out and do it. And I understand that there's loud party notices. You know, the parties get loud and get out of hand. But 120 days, even with Runner Park, we've gone to battle for it. Because if there is no, it's the final word as soon as you put it in your window. And there's nothing you could do. If you come home late and the cops come over, you're getting your $500 fine. There has to be a way to, to oh, what's the word, protest it, or to bring forth uh, something to, to go against it, to say, hey, this is what had happened, this is what had not. But 120 days, that's a long time. That's four months. That's, a, that's pretty much a whole semester. And if it only applies to renters, or does it apply only to, to everybody? Because if it applies to renters only, you know you're going after the homeowner who's also paying property taxes and, and being stuck with the same thing. Uh, it's just something that there has to be an out or a way to say, hey, look, there wasn't a party, or is there a time frame? It was 10, past 10 o'clock, you know, which is the quote unquote quiet hours. So something that gives you an option other than it's 120 days, we showed up the first time, and you have a party and there's alcohol. Or if it's, you know, not alcohol, if there's a party. I mean, there's multiple things that could be before it went forward that you might want to look at. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. And just... I wonder, Mayor Seale, if we could have perhaps just have our staff, our lieutenant, to give us at least a, a determination of what... Because there's some pretty strong language in here in terms of what defines a public nuisance and, and, and I think it makes more sense to let he, off Lieutenant French speak to that rather than myself but that is the number one I can tell you and certainly also uh, this is protestable that was the subject of much discussion last time we we're here with some significant changes to actually make that more in line of supporting the public and through that action too so I think you'll be glad to hear that 
And good or bad news, it does apply to everybody. There's a consistency, which I think is a good thing, too. So. Just want to make sure it applies to not just alcoholic teenagers. Certainly so. But I, I would like to hear that, too, Madam Mayor. That would be helpful, I think. So we'll put Lieutenant French back on the hot seat. <laughs> And I do understand there's an appeals process that's available, and it's through a non-police officer related, so it'll be through the city manager if it does need to be appealed. That is correct, Mayor. I, I don't know where... 9.38.1. Yeah, I don't know where to start. Um, there were a lot of questions, yeah. As far as what a public nuisance is, and this is directed at unruly parties. Could it be a party that... Uh, adults out of college are at yeah that's a possibility but we we respond to so many calls that the party is out of control and there's a lot of things going on in the neighborhood that just are offensive to the to the neighbors of the party um, and we we go and we respond and we try to figure out what's going on and and um, who's being affected by it and who's trying to sleep and we're also very concerned about people leaving the party that are under the influence of alcohol and so this this strict policy and ordinance is very much needed um, because the alcohol use and abuse is continuing in the, in the college uh, with the college kids these days and we see it every weekend and especially every Thursday night um, but it wouldn't it wouldn't um, relate to domestic di disturbances or um, um, uh, disturbing the peace calls arguments anything like that this is specifically targeting uh, loud um, unruly parties that are out of control where there's there's too much drinking going on they're they're um, affecting the neighborhood and we need to get involved and it's a serious matter because there's uh, there's people there there might be uh, alcohol poisoning uh, in need of uh, help and, and we try to provide that but it, it's something that just is out of control and so we we felt that this was necessary and it's also necessary to um, to line to be in line with the uh, other jurisdictions in our area too well and also I just want to be clear on the record we're not targeting any one group of people in the, the um in the community that's why we needed to make it get broad um, and we do have an appeals process built in but um, if you needed more information we also have the the outline of it you, sorry you can't <laughs> no, we, we can't do it back and forth sorry it's just a that's all right so um, anyway so hopefully that I answered some of the questions um, did anybody else have any comments or anything that they wanted to state before we take a vote all right, seeing none, I will ask if we have a motion. I'd like to adopt a resolution settle, setting the amounts for the fine of violation for Katati Municipal Code Chapter 9.38, Alcohol Offenses and Loud Parties. Second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? We'll show it's a 5-0 vote in support. Thank you. Move on to item number four, agreement for closed circuit television inspection of the sanitary sewer system. And I'll turn to Acting City Manager Damien Obed. Yes. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. So this um, the agenda item before you is about um, sewer inspection, which is actually more riveting than most of what you'll find on TV late at night. <laughs> and it's, um, <laughs> it's basically a method of inspecting sewer systems where you want a camera down the sewer line and look for physical defects in the um, pipeline sags, cracks, joints that have separated, roots that have intruded. Um, you know, it's a visual inspection of that. That's an indication of deterioration. And it's a, um, it's a best practice as opposed to just um, replacing sewer lines based on age alone. Age is one factor when you assess conditions of utilities, of infrastructure, but um, inspection is the, sort of the next layer of um, condition assessment so that you, when you start prioritizing your pro capital projects, you look at the, the age of your infrastructure, um, you know, your failure rates, and then your visual inspections is so that way you can more efficiently target infrastructure money instead of replacing lines just purely based on age or something else. You can b replace things based on its actual condition and failure history. 
and typically CCTV is done during the winter time when the, um, the groundwater levels are higher because then you can see typically that at that time the, the sewer lines would be submerged in the groundwater so you can see if there's, because they're non-pressurized pipes, you can see if there's physical defects that allows uh, groundwater to intrude or surface water to come in from rainfall. And it's one of two uh, methods for, um, for sewer line inspection. The other commonly used one is smoke testing. And that's typically a summer, they do it in the summertime t typically, and they basically drop a smoke bomb in the sewer and look for where it comes out. I mean, it's kind of a simplified version of what it is. Um, that one obviously requires noticing of residents before you do that because it may have become, well, <laughs> Lieutenant French here may get calls on something like that. But um, that's not what's, so before you tonight is the CCTV part of it and um, I expect in the future there will also be a smoke testing part as well. Um, they, aren't, they don't look for the same things. The smoke testing looks for um, manholes and infiltration, direct infiltration, um, connections f um, to the laterals from people's downspouts where you're having rainwater come in to your sewer system. And um, uh, sewage is expensive to convey and to treat and obviously you want to be tr treating just sewage and not a bunch of rainwater which doesn't need to be treated. So um, the two inspection methods go hand in hand. And we put it out to bid. There was, uh, there was two bidders on this project. Uh, Mixis was one and Empire Pipe Cleaning was the other. And um, what's proposed is a, uh, a five-year contract. So over the course of five years, we would be um, rotating throughout different zones of the city, inspecting them and um, cataloging the conditions of those segments of the, of the uh, city sewer system. In, in the adopted 1415 budget, there is a $125,000 um, budget line item for this activity. So there's no appropriation needed for, the, um, for this contract. And we would proceed um, probably as soon as the end of this winter on this um, contract and then pause until the next winter and then we'd pick it up again. That'd be next fiscal year. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Do we have any questions from the KS? Councilman Harvey. Um, have we done this before? <laughs> and if we have, when did we do it and what is sort of the best practices for us, um, for a city to do this? Um, so as a matter of routine, when we have new sewer lines installed, we get them video inspected before we take possession of them so we know what their condition is before we actually own the thing. And um, sometimes when there's specific issues that we're tracking down, we'll video inspect them. But um, more recently, we haven't been doing sort of a systematic inspection of all the areas because there could be things that we just don't know about that are maybe groundwater intrusion areas. That would be easy fixes. Um, so right now, we're addressing mostly areas that come up and they become issues for us, so we look at them or for new, new, um, new installations, we look at them as well. So is it fair to say that this is more uh, a pro proactive approach than what we've had in the past, which is reactive if we see a problem? Yeah, it, it, it's been reactive in the past, and this is definitely a proactive approach. And then is it similar to how we do with the roads, where it's better to be proactive and fix things when they're small problems versus big problems? Yes. Yeah. Uh, certainly with sewer, you don't want a small problem or a small unknown problem to turn into a a big problem or a spill or something like that. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, yes, Councilmember Lemon. Along the same lines as Councilmember Harvey, uh, I could see why if, if, if having the money during the difficult times that all cities have been dealing with the last uh, half decade or so, it may be difficult to have the funds to initiate doing this sort of work with a camera, a camera-based system. But I would imagine that has to be a a lot more cost effective than just what in essence is almost random replacement. I mean, granted, you're taking a guess at how long a pipe should last for it falls apart, but, but the truth of the matter is, I don't know what the calculation would be, but it seems very wasteful because you could be replacing pipes that are perfectly fine or having pipes that are sitting there have been failed for perhaps a decade and, and spending a lot of co costs there too. So is there, is there a guess at all at how much savings are involved in this? So, um, so age is, is one indicator of condition, but it's typically a poor indicator. There's a lot of other factors that go into it. Um, and it, it definitely s saves you from 
reactive replacement, mm -hmm. which um, you know can be, especially if they're reactive and responding to an actual emergency, they can be very expensive. Yeah. Um, and if you can if you can plan it, you know, you do an assessment and then you plan it out over time, you can um, you can get to things in a kind of a logical sequence instead of having to respond or, or just replacing things based on age, which may not be a um, the best use or the most efficient use of money. Well, I'd have a much greater comfort level as a, as a council member spending money in replacing pipes that I know need to be replaced as opposed to making a guess. So, so this sounds very good. Thank you. Yes, sorry, more. Yes, um, this would cover all of the sewer lines within the city. Correct. So the the first year would be just a like a zone of the sewer system, and it doesn't commit the council to future year expenditures. It just sets the contract up so that if the council decides to appropriate money in addition, you know, in future years, that we can continue with the work. But it would eventually do the entire sewer system. Okay, and so the zones would be. Uh, broken up proportionately, like the first year would be 20% of the overall sewer structure? Yeah, we, we would approximately. Yeah, there's, um, there are sewer, sewer sheds. Don't say that five times too fast. But <laughs> sewer sheds, and so we would probably target them in accordance with the, like the sewer master plan. They have sewer sheds. We would target it like that. So you focus on an area, then you move to another area the next year. And, and I'm assuming with your knowledge of the infrastructure, we would target the most vulnerable section first? Areas in our, um, in our sewer master plan, some areas had higher levels of I and I than others, and so we would target those first. Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't lock us in down the road after the first year? No, we could just do one year and then do nothing else. It just sets up a five-year agreement that we can use in future years if the council appropriates that. Uh, so, if it, so if in year two and a half we have some other um, unforeseen um, situations, we could delay the further implementation of that or the... That's correct, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so now that we've uh, discussed it, I'll open it up for public comment. Is anybody interested in commenting on item number four? Okay, please come forward. Um, I have a question. Uh, given that this process takes place in the winter um, and is dependent on groundwater um, and is measuring that type of interaction, what effect is the drought going to have on the efficacy of this process? Thank you. So if I can turn to our acting city manager. So there. Um, while groundwater levels aren't as high as maybe they can be historically in some really wet years, their um, groundwater levels are fairly typical right now. Um, and it still doesn't preclude you from seeing any sort of physical defect in the, in the line. Um, it's, it's not unusual that you, in, you know, every year is going to be a little bit different in terms of the groundwater level. So it's not unusual to have some years where it's a little bit higher than other years, but it's basically um, there's no significant drop in groundwater level that's going to make a significant difference. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have any other further questions or do we have a motion? Yeah. I move to authorize the acting city manager to execute a five-year agreement for the closed circuit television inspection of the city's sanitary sewer system. And I'd be happy to second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? If we could show for the record, that's a 5-0 vote in favor. Thank you. Now we'll move on to city manager's report. Back to our acting city manager, Damien Ovid. And I will say that was riveting, Damien. <laughs> Although we did lose somebody. <laughs> I'll try harder next time. Okay, um, so it's a short one. I just wanted to uh, announce that um, Officer Marcos Perez of our police department was um, nominated to be the officer of the year for the Rohnert Park Katati Rotary Club cool. um, as a public safety officer from Katati. So that's very exciting for Marcos and for all of us. Yeah. And then also, um, I also wanted to announce that we have a, um, as of this week, we have a new police dispatcher, Darlene Arand, and um, in a forthcoming council meeting, we'll have her come up and introduce her. That's it. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Through, through the chair, if I may? Yes. Uh, I wonder if, uh, for Officer Perez, when the Officer of the Year presentation comes, if we could be notified of when that might be? There might be something some of us might want to attend. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you, Chair. Sure. All right, so we'll move on to City Council reports. So I'll start on my right tonight. Council member. Okay, that would be me. Um, just a couple of quick items. Actually, one that's coming up this Thursday is um, Sonoma County Ag Preservation Open Space District meeting, but it's a dual meeting. So um, we've now formed a subcommittee on agricultural issues in the county and, and how Ag and Open Space deals with, um, with that. I, I think everybody knows Sonoma County Ag and Open Space for the land that's been preserved. Oh, I'm out of time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going? All right, thanks. That was close. Um, for, you know, the, the open space that has been secured over the years, I mean, we're talking thousands, thousands of acres, um, but lesser known for protecting ag, which is, you know, the biggest um, industry in our county. So we formed this Ag Subcommittee. So that's going to meet like from 4 to 5 and then from 5 to 7 will be our regular uh, monthly meeting. So I'll report out on that when I come back. And now I know this may sound a little gigglish and funny, but I'm going to report out on it. Um, and I was invited to be a mock judge for the Miss Sonoma County um, pageant. I guess is the word. So myself, um, D.A. Ravitch was there, Aaron Carlstrom from San Rosa City Council, and a couple of business leaders. And we did this on Sunday, where we did the, um, the teens first and then the more adults. And um, I have to say, there was some incredibly, this is not your mother's beauty contest any longer. It's I mean, a scholarship fund. It's, these guys are really bright and articulate. And we were there to critique them. We did have a list, and Sue, I think you did this last year. Um, there was a list of questions which I strongly recommended one question be dropped completely because when I asked it of one contestant, the question was something along the lines of, when was the last time you cried and why? And this woman went in to explain how on Valentine's Day she laid down on the floor in her room and cried all day. And, and I said, you know, why are we asking <laughs> questions like this? It was absolutely ridiculous. But she did a great job, and she did recover from that, according to her words. So um, anyway, it was an interesting, uh, interesting event, and we were there for like almost four hours doing this. It was amazing how long it went on. But, um, and I guess that pageant is coming up next weekend or the weekend after. I think it's kind of coming up shortly, and it's usually over at Spreckles. But that is my report out. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Harvey. Okay. I have a little bit more, so I'll try and go fast. Um, on uh, February 12th, I attended the Mayors and Council Members, and that was very informative. Um, on 2.17, I went um, to the school board meeting, and that was... Um, with uh, Beth Dadko from um, the health department that did the portrait of Sonoma County. She did a combined one for Rona Park and Katati, and I was joined by um, council member uh, Gina Belforte from Rona Park. And so we got to see what both communities look like from a health action perspective. And one of the asks was, um, at that point, was to reestablish our two by two by two, because we haven't had any in a while. Um, after that, um, I got a note from um, Gina stating that while John and I still have um, our spots from a Katati perspective, Warner Park doesn't have their two picked. So as soon as that happens, then uh, I'll probably be asking that staff work with the staff of Warner Park and the school board to get those going again, because it sounds like we do have stuff to talk about. Uh, the next meeting I attended was the Waste Management Agency um, meeting on the 18th. Um, I know that um, the Acton City Manager gave you a little bit on that, but there's some hopping things going with that. You know, there's the... Um, the uh, lawsuit, which we're trying to um, deal with, not much I can talk about on that. Um, because of the things that are going on, we will have to look at um, raising rates. So um, staff was given uh, direction to bring back um, what some of that might look like. There were those that wanted it solely to go um, to the curb 
um, cans and not impact the South Hall and others, you know, that felt that, you know, there should be at least some sense of um, sharing um, in that rate impact. The um, concern with the um, South Hall had to do with that that's the the quality of stuff that comes in with that. Uh, they don't really want to discourage that. So that's one of the things the staff will look at um, in doing that. And then, of course, at some point, we will be coming back with the uh, JPA agreement, whatever form that takes. Um, hard to say how that um, form will take. Um, and lastly, um, we um, appointed an interim um, count, uh, agency counsel. The, um, the uh, attorney that was our attorney since 2005 um, tendered their resignation. So we have an interim attorney and we will ultimately look for a final there. Then um, on the 18th, I also um, attended the Katati Oversight Board where we approved the um, ROPS for 2015. On the 19th, I attended a Laguna Walk given by um, Jenny Blaker that um, as Mark points out, you know, very involved in creek critters. So um, I was able to um, go kind of look at some of those properties, see where the Laguna Head blinds is again. Even though I'd done it before, it had been, you know, it'd been a while since, I, since I'd been. So that was, that was helpful. And then last but not least, um, I attended, they had a hunger index forum um, in Santa Rosa. And they brought together, all the city councils were all invited. I think everybody got, um, uh, notes um, to go, but, but I actually went, it was really very interesting in looking at Sonoma County, there is a need um, for meals uh, of 216 million meals. Um, and of that 216 million uh, meals that are needed, there are 129 million that are purchased by low income families. There are 52 million provided by the m very many nonprofits in the county. And basically, the difference between those and the 216 million is uh, a gap of 35 million meals. So that means that there are uh, many folks within Sonoma County that are going without meals. Um, so it was looking at different ways um, to look at that. Um, I, I think at some point um, for our community, especially since we um, are looking to have the health and wellness um, in our general plan, that this is something that um, maybe when we have our strategic planning next year, that um, we look at some of the other programs. They do have a program in Windsor that maybe we can, you know, look at something like that. But it was very interesting. And, and, and what I'll leave you with is uh, it, these meals, basically, it costs $2.27 for a meal. And if everybody, at, as was put out there by the gentleman from the Redwood Empire Food Bank said if everybody would double up, you know, if you had $2.27 and you were able to then double that, we would go a long way in um, coming up with those 35 million meals that are short. Thank you. All right, I'll turn to my left, Councilmember Lehman. Thank you, Mayor Skillman. Uh, let's start with Sonoma Clean Power. I have really, really big news but I can't tell you. <laughs> can't tell you just yet, but I would say to everyone here on the dais and out in the audience and in the press, keep an eye this Thursday. We should have a press release, something. There's nothing new, completely new under the sun, but this is a relatively new thing, at least in this state. Uh, it's kind of a something new and somewhat untried, but it's, a, it's something new and local sustainable power we're going to be trying, so look forward to that. I'll tell you all about it next time. Uh, then secondly, let's see, we recently had our Madison Council members, legislative committee meeting. Uh, wanted to give you a heads up, particularly to my alternate. We have a field trip coming up in May. We are going to go to Sacramento to lobby our local legislators. Uh, should be a full day trip, uh, road trip as they say. Should be very good. I, I've heard rumors there could be a lunch with uh, Senator McGuire's office. We'll see how, that could be a good time if that happens. Uh, do you have a, is there a date set for that yet? Not just yet. Okay. We're just firming that up because the process looks like this. First of all, legislation is just beginning to form up and we have to spend the next month or so taking a look and seeing what do we really want to leverage all our combined uh, force behind. Uh, and there's a few directions. Right now I'm thinking there seems to be some potentially big legislation coming regarding funding for road work, transportation from uh, Speaker Atkins. 
that might be a very good direction because I think that's something that affects all of us in the whole region and something that we could all get behind to push on. But that remains to be seen. But I wanted to let you know about that because I would love to have you come. And I think that would be a good thing for as many of us to go as possible. Uh, and I will also say after seven long years, uh, I have to report that Chair Gary Plass has stepped down. We just had our elections and Gary is no longer chair. I'm the new chair for legislative committee for mayors and council members here in the county for this year. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Plass. He's done this for a long time. We're glad to have him still as part of the committee uh, take advantage of all that experience. So that's what I have for you this time around. Thank you. And Vice Mayor Moore. Uh, well, on the week of the 8th, I believe, 7th, 8th, 6th, 7th, 8th of February, I was in Los Angeles for the Parma Public Agency Risk Managers Association Conference as a representative for Redwood Empire Municipal Insurance Fund. Um, there are some very good sessions and some good ideas on what we can do to uh, limit some of our exposure and some of the um, costs associated with some of the risk management. Um, of course, there were some sessions were not so good, but most of them were very good. Um, and then REMIF is moving along very well in the um, potential self-funding process. Some of the numbers that are we're looking at potentially, provided we get some adequate stop loss or reinsurance quotes for the higher numbers, um, could come in at close to $2 million in savings. So um, the more we delve into it, the more encouraging it looks. Of course, there's no guarantees, but uh, it's moving along. And if things go well and the board approves this process, we may be able to implement that in July, uh, maybe August at the latest. So those things are going well. And then um, regarding the uh, Library Advisory Board, we had a conflict on scheduling, so I was not able to attend that last one, but hope to attend the others. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Um, and the only thing, I, I also attended the mayors and council members dinner on the 12th, and then on the 15th, I'm glad to hear some others were able to participate as well. Um, Jenny Blaker took me on a tour, um, and that was just really interesting to get some history of Katati, and I'd never walked back in that section to see the the beginning of the creek, and so anyway, it was fascinating to see that we we're actually the source, and um, to see some of the farmland back there, and that whole garden that they have set up is really fantastic, so... Anyhow, glad that we were able to do some of that. You know, so, can, I, can I add one thing to uh, the Jenny trip, too, because she talked to me weeks ago when we did that. Um, I'm going to bring that up to the Ag and Open Space staff. Um, in the next cycle of their grant funding, which will be about a year plus out, um, if there's something over in that area that we might want to consider doing that would be somewhat of a preservation, um, there's some prime state ag lands, I think is what they're called over there. Um, but there's, there seems to be a number of things that are all just kind of on the periphery that uh, it might apply. And, and what we would do, I, 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 don't, I have no ideas at this point, but I think um, depending on when our next strategic planning session might be, this is something it'd be great for us to be thinking about. And when that comes up, you know, no, no different than what we did with the Filetti property a number of years ago, this might be a great opportunity to do something again. Well, the chair? Yeah. Actually, excited to hear that. I'm thinking back on the Laguna Mark West scoping process from a few years ago. Our acting city manager is going to remember that one. Yeah. And I'll remind, I see a lot of nodding heads here, but the bottom line, we had a plan that involved some restoration improvements, general things like that, uh, that included that area that was very, very high. I believe it came out number two. I still think it should have been number one, too, <laughs> uh, on the ranking list in that. So I don't know where that's at, what the potential, but I would think with some of the monies coming towards restoration and water in, in more current budgets, if there's any area for cross-collaboration with that, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, the other thing I might, I might add, and um, the mayor may have more information on this, but the Prop uh, 1B money is also focused for recharge watershed type projects as well. That's a priority in that um, bond. That's kind of my thought. There's got to be some way to tie those all together. If we can bring that many pieces and you have something not only just takes care of the headwaters of the Laguna de Santa Rosa, but also as, as your plan envisioned, it was something that actually benefited numerous communities, had community connector aspects in it, uh, recreation, exercise, healthy living, uh, walkable town, as well as the restoration protection aspect. That should be something that I think would compete well, but perhaps could get funded. So, 
Well, like to see it. Yeah, and it was interesting too with all of the work on the smart, you could actually, um, the, the connectivity issue with the, with the bike trail coming through and then it's actually going to connect over to the smart rail trail that they're setting up there as well. So you've got, like you were saying, the recreation, you've got the, the public garden, which or community garden, which is really nice. And, um, and then it'd be working with, um, I know parts of it are on Rona Park and parts of it are on Katati. So um, it'd be great for, to see a collaborative effort to help maintain and preserve that area. So I wonder if I could ask what would be the appropriate timeline perhaps to bounce this off the agency or because you have some pretty deep background in this type of thing. Because I'm not sure where they are at in process with this right now, but I wonder if it would be work at some point peeing them to see if we can kind of wake this process back up. I've, I've already asked them the question. Um, we haven't been able to connect yet. But uh, th where it is basically is the scoping study was done. It ranked projects. And then the next step was to take the highest ranked projects and <clears throat> take the next step to a feasibility study, which is an actual on the ground study of the, the project areas to see if they are in fact, um, if they'd still rank as high after they've actually been. Right. And I believe that was done with the Colden Creek. Uh, pro that was number one, I think, wasn't it? In, in Runner Park. I think that's the one that came out number one. I think they actually did. Yeah, that, that project already had a whole bunch of grant funds it, attached to it. It was already, already well pre-baked, ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, so if we're done, I will adjourn the meeting and we will adjourn to closed session to finish up our last couple of items. So thank you very much for being here this evening.